this can be perfect. It can really significantly How come you always bark when I'm making a video? It's my job, Dad. <laughs> hey there, Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And today we're going to explore using a shotgun microphone to improve the sound of your recordings, whether you're recording in a voiceover booth or you're doing something like recording for your YouTube channel. Today, I want to demonstrate everything using an affordable shotgun microphone. So this is the Cinco Mic D2. I've got two of them. One is the one I reviewed from a couple of years ago, and Cinco just sent me another one out of the blue. Can you see that okay? So everything that you're going to hear today has been recorded with this affordable and actually really good shotgun microphone. We're going to switch over to the brand new one, but I just wanted to show you that I do have two of these shotgun microphones. So everything that you're going to hear today was recorded with the Cinco Mic D2. Now, full disclosure, Cinco did send me this microphone, but I'm not otherwise compensated for creating this video. They don't know that I'm making this video. They're not going to get to see this video before you do. I'm not getting paid for them by them. I'm not getting paid by them. But I did want to give you full disclosure that I am using a microphone that was given to me by a company. I reviewed this mic a couple of years ago, and I was really happy with it. I was really impressed by the microphone. So even though it's only $200 and I've got lots of microphones that cost a whole lot more, this is still a microphone that I tend to go back to and record with fairly frequency, fairly frequently. It's pretty forgiving. It's not too expensive. And I thought it would make a really good demonstration for this particular video. All right, there we go. I've switched to the brand new one that Cinco sent to me, uh, just so that we can see what the current version sounds like in case there's any difference from the one that was recorded a couple of years ago. So let's talk about two features to using a shotgun microphone that you might not necessarily think about when you're putting together your YouTube studio. The first is that the shotgun microphone can, still, can get great sound while still be positioned out of the frame. So the microphone is right here, just outside a frame, but still really close to me. So if you're accustomed to thinking about, oh, I got to get a dynamic microphone or I got to get a large diaphragm condenser microphone, but it's going to be in the frame. If that microphone is not part of the storytelling of your video or of your channel, you can get it out of your frame so people can concentrate on you and you can have a nice, clean, uncluttered frame. And you don't have to have the microphone visible. It's a big benefit. And secondly, you don't have to worry about a lavalier microphone. So pinning a, a lav mic on, you don't have to worry about charging the wireless lav or getting it placed or taped so that you don't get the clothes rustle or anything like that. That can add friction. That can add difficulty to, to making your video. So if you can create a nice space where the microphone is just always in place, that way you can just turn on your camera hit record and start recording straight away. So I have my microphone going into my recording device. I'm recording on my camera. Sim uh, really reduces the amount of friction in making your videos. Another great benefit. Shotgun microphones are just sort of designed for this situation because they can provide a really good high quality recording at something of a distance. This microphone is probably about 10 inches away from me, 12 inches away from me, but it's still, it's really focused in on my voice. And that's why they're widely used. That pattern, that shotgun pattern, that, that laser-like focus a shotgun microphone can have on your voice can really help minimize imperfections in your recording space. That could be reverb, that could be background noise, that could be noise from the furnace or the street, Min room, uh, noise that's hard to minimize. You can help reduce that sound by using a shotgun microphone. And why is that? Well, it's because of the pattern of the microphone. Shotgun microphones are very, very sensitive from the front. So they're, they're they have a, this lobe of sensitivity that is really quite focused in the center. And as you move over to the side, so I'm talking into the side of the microphone, it doesn't hear me nearly as well. It's going to hear my voice reflecting off the walls. But if there's sound that emanates from the side, so you see I have the window placed to the side. So if there's noise that comes through the window, it's somewhat minimized because of the way the mic is positioned. 
And mic position can be really important. And it's something that you should experiment with in your room. The placement of the talent in front of the mic, the mic in the room, and the position of both of you together in the room can actually have a pretty significant impact. If you're standing directly in a corner, you may notice that there are exaggerated bass frequencies. If you're standing right near, next to a very reflective surface, an untreated wall, you can get reverb or reflection that the microphone will still pick up. So I do strongly encourage you to not lock yourself into the very first position that you choose in your studio, but really to experiment with different places around the room, different places in your space to see which are going to give you the best possible recording. Even though a shotgun microphone can help minimize the background noise, minimize the background noise, it's not going to eliminate it completely. You may still hear parts of my room reflecting. You may hear bits of ambient noise, but they're going to be significantly reduced. So if you're building your YouTube studio, if you're building a place to do voiceover, you still want to consider doing lots of acoustic treatment, thinking about what surfaces can your voice reflect off of to try and get the best possible sound into the microphone and minimize the problems in your space. So a classic example is many people may be thinking about buying a very famous thousand dollar shotgun microphone because they hear that that's, that's the real great microphone, but that might push your budget to the very limits of what you can afford. I would much prefer, and what I've done in this space, is use a less expensive microphone, the $200 Cinco microphone, but I've spent about $800 worth of acoustic treatment in the room. So I've got acoustic treatment on the wall in front of me. I've got acoustic treatment on the walls behind me. I'm trying to create the best possible recording space I can to give the microphone the best chance of picking up me and nothing else. So the two together, the, the pattern of the microphone and the acoustic treatment is going to really work in your favor and give you the best possible chance of getting a crystal clear recording that's going to make your videos better, more engaging, and easier to listen to. Even though a shotgun microphone can minimize background noise and there's lots of advantages to the supercardioid pattern, if you're going to be recording voiceover for a client, you still want to have the best possible recording space that you can, one that is controlled and repeatable. And that's why even though I use a shotgun microphone a lot for voiceover, I still do it inside my whisper room. I still do it inside my booth. I want to make sure that I have the cleanest possible recording to give to a client. And I also want it to be repeatable. Having a good recording space means that Every time you go to record, the room will sound the same. It doesn't change very much in here. So, yes, the shotgun microphone can minimize noise. The super cardioid pattern can fix the bad room, so to speak. But even if you're going to be using a shotgun microphone and you want to do voiceover professionally, where you're getting paid to supply the recordings to a client, you still really should think about creating a nice, good booth that can be repeatable and consistent from recording session to recording session. That's kind of the key to being a voice actor. Then we're just relying on the quality of the sound of the microphone. And if we like the sound of the microphone, then that could be the right mic for the booth. And you can see that the position of it is still very much the same as it was outside. It's to the, to the side, pointed down at my mouth. I could adjust it up or down, but I want to get a nice, clean, full, rich signal. So when I'm here, I just also check my levels to make sure that I've got a nice, strong, rich signal. Even though the noise floor is quite low in here, I still want to have a good, rich signal that's going right up to the top of that green on the meter, maybe just tickling into the yellow, so that I, I know that I'm going to have a good recording with a lot of distance between the noise floor and my voice, so the microphone can sound as good as it can sound, and I can sound as good as I can sound. But even if you don't have a proper booth, like a whisper room, you do want to spend as much time as you can on acoustic treatment. It's really important. So once you've found your spot, you've experimented with different places, and you've treated your room, you've put acoustic treatment on the walls, potentially on the ceiling, right up here, potentially on the ceiling, you might be standing on a thick shaggy carpet trying to reduce all of those echoes. 
But once you've found your spot, then you can consider how you're going to place your microphone. I have mine attached to a pole that's just sort of permanently attached, a pipe that's permanently attached to my ceiling. But you don't have to do that. You could use a microphone stand. You could use a boom arm. You could use a C stand with a boom pole attached to it to increase your flexibility. But they're nice and light. They're not going to cause a microphone stand to tip over because they are quite light. So you can place them in lots of different places, lots of different positions so that you can experiment with how that mic appears in front of you to get the best possible sound. The placement that you should start with is a placement like this, where the microphone is just above you, just above the talent, and pointed down towards the talent's, uh, down towards the talent's mouth. So you might point it down towards mouth, down towards the chest area, but angle it down and usually just off to the side and above. So the microphone is actually right here. See how it's really kind of off to the side? That will ensure or minimize the risk of sending a plosive into the microphone. And sometimes when the microphone is pointed up, sometimes it can hear the sound of you breathing, it can hear like nose whistles and a little bit of that sort of extraneous mouth noise. So sometimes pointing down at the talent can actually give a slightly better sound. So a good place to start is to have the microphone up and to the side like I have here. Then you can just start to take a level. When you started to record, you just record with you delivering the way you might deliver to the to the camera and set the recording level on your interface, on your recording device, whatever it is, so that you get a nice, loud, strong signal compared to the background noise. So if you're quiet for just a moment, you can get a recording of the room tone and then you can try and record a nice loud signal Generally, if you have meters, you want to try and record with an average at about the minus 12 mark, between maybe minus 18 and minus 12, with peaks, the highest point, maybe just above that. Sometimes the meters will have colors, uh, green, yellow, and red. Try and have your signal at the top of the green and just barely touching the yellow. If you've gone into the red, you've risked clipping. So, But that's just an easy way to, to set the recording level. Try and get to the very top of the green so that when you're not talking, the green, the level is all the way at the bottom of that meter. So there you go. We've recorded setup. We've recorded techniques, mic placement, experimentation. We've covered room treatment. We've covered many of the different aspects of using a shotgun microphone for your home studio or for your voiceover studio. I really hope this helps. If you have any questions, come join the discussion down in the comments or come on over to the Booth Junkie Discord and talk with other fellow Booth Junkies who may be experiencing the same stuff you're doing. We can all talk it out and try and get your sound as crisp and clear as possible so that you can record something amazing. That's it. We'll talk to you next time. We'll talk to you soon. Be well.